The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 417 What a sham! By the time Starlight and her friends were escorted back to their quarters, the sun was more than halfway from noon to dusk, and she had a feeling they were skipping lunch and going back to dinner. Shafts of light entered through armored windows, casting her long shadow against white marble brick walls and carved pillars holding bowls with potted plants. The architectural style emphasized flat surfaces with swirly, intricate trim, and in places rugs trimmed specially for the keep's layout carpeted the center of the walkway. Starlight passed more guards, robed pages and scribes, poofily dressed dignitaries and more, the brightness of her surroundings forcing open her eyes after the dim gray of the war room interior. They reached the room and stepped inside, the guard standing back and leaving the bee. Shinespark sighed as she walked through the door, Gerardo ruffled his feathers, and Maple and Slipstream walked on either side of Valet, who hobbled along with a stiff limp in all four legs. Starlight went last, or so she thought. Hi, Jam Jars announced, wiping her lips with a contented hoof as she walked in after them. The guards looked slightly surprised to see her, but allowed her to pass, closing and locking the door in her wake. Hello yourself, Jordan replied, glancing over the short main filly. You were out and about while we were testifying? Did you not remain in here, napping? Everyone stopped to watch as Jam Jar stopped at a dresser, withdrew the wig made from the remnants of her mane, and fixed it smoothly on her head, jumping up and sprawling out and hogging an entire bed for herself. She gazed at everyone disinterestedly, as if daring them to ask where she had been. Nope. Belay shook her head, taking steps toward the back room. Not gonna bother. What were you doing? Slips through mask, picking up the slack. You weren't sneaking around, were you? You could have just gone with us. I hope you weren't, Maple added. Not so soon after Valet put everyone on high alert. Jam jars looked amused. Did she? That must have been why everyone was so easy to get by. All it took was a little patience and ha! Her eyes sparkled. Don't you want to know what I found out? Gerardo huffed. Provided it isn't anything that could bring this entire castle down on our heads. We've been quite fortunate and seem to be nearing a position where we can get away from this situation unscathed, and it wouldn't do to endanger that. Mm, spoil sport! Jam Jar stuck her tongue out at them. Does anyone else want to hear what I found? I bet you don't already know. Shinespark raised an eyebrow. If it's important, say it. Jam Jar's grinned. No, not unless you say please. Please, Maple asked, trying to sound conciliatory. Mm, Jam Jar's hummed, folding her forelegs and mulling it over. Nah, not good enough. Say, please secret 27 times, in a row. Shinespark looked incredulous and Valet called out in protest from the other room, but Slipstream relented and began to chant. Please secret, please secret, please secret. After a minute, she exhaled, letting out a long breath and smiling. There, now what do you know? Yeah, Jam Jars looked away. It was only 26 times. Say it again from the start. Sighing, Slipstream gave up and went to rest her own legs. Well, I suppose I don't care that much then. Seeing that she had long since lost everyone else's attention, uh, Jam just frowned and hit the bed. Fine! I snuck around to follow that magic stone you gave them, remember? I thought I'd make sure no one tried to steal it or anything. You know, she glanced toward the room where Valet was, since you needed to talk to your mayor friend and all. Maple pursed her lips. You're right. I don't think I saw them bring it out at the meeting. Isn't that what they wanted it for? Mm, Jam Jar shrugged. I don't know. They took it to another part of the tower. There was a pony there called the Everlast Ambassador and a bunch of guards and a scribe with a magic thingy. They called it Ernby and talked with him forever and the scribe was saying something about showing the boss Stormhoof what they were saying. Pardon? Jordan blinked. Showing what they were saying? How so? Did he have a terminal in that podium reading a transcript while we talked or some such? Whatever did they talk about? Boring things, Jamshot replied. 
money and airships and what Einrich needed and that there were a lot of griffins coming who could stay there and help defend the city for a while if they wanted it. Nothing that sounded against the rules. Shinespark started pacing, walking between the beds and a large semicircular table for eating. Really, Jessica Sven? That's weird. The meeting we were at was a complete sham. We went Kiro and Jam Jars cut her off with an angry snort. I remember him. He was the boss of that loser who knocked up my mom again. Slipstream went slightly red and Shinespark coughed. Yes, him. Kiro was seedy. I don't know how that console could take him seriously in the first place. It had to have been that other ship, the one with those two mares on that backed up his account. And their high prince hijacked a meeting to insult the place over and over, and then Valet and Gerardo were... <sighs> she sighed and shook her head. Now that I think about it, they didn't even give us rules of etiquette going in there. They didn't even try to make us behave. It's like they knew all along that that wasn't supposed to be legitimate, and they were conducting their real business somewhere else. You... I don't think that means we're in danger, do you? Maple whispered, suddenly tense. I doubt it, but I have no idea. Shinespark continued to pace, thinking earnestly. It's odd, though. Covering up what you're really doing from the public is what a press conference is for, but they already scheduled a press conference for later. Someone is playing at something, Gerardo mused, but we haven't an idea what it is. And we don't need to, Maple declared, taking the center of the room. Maybe Lord Stormhoof knew that meeting with all of us would be useless, so he did everything behind the scenes as a backup. Maybe not, but it won't concern us if we don't make it, right? I want to stay out of trouble this time, and we've come far too close already. After Iron Ridge, the Griffin Empire is supposed to be a vacation. I agree, slips through Matted, standing up. You're fine, Valet grumbled from the other room. Now pipe down! I'm trying to rest my ridiculously ow-ow-ow legs! Nothing dangerous is going to... She was interrupted by a knock on the door. Shinespark beckoned the visitor in, and it swung wide to reveal Meltdown, still fully clad in her infernal armor, with Wallace Whitewing's muscular face lurking in the background. Lord Garland Stormhoof has decided you can go early, Meltdown informed them, striding into the room with heavy clunks of metal. On the condition that you company Wallace and both stay away from the press conference. You're free to talk to reporters on your own, but he doesn't want any grandstanding derailing things like today's council. This room will remain your quarters for the duration of your stay in Stormhof, but you are free to go at any time. Stormhof is not yet ready to return the soundstone to you, and it will be held in your name if you leave before the time it is ready. Go as you please. She turned and walked away, taking half the regiment of guards with her and leaving everyone blinking. That's it, Van? Slipstream asked, glancing at the door where Wallace waited. We're free? Ho there, heroes! Wallace beckoned from beyond the door. I've been kept in a most vile blackout in the proceedings, but the time for that is vanquished. Might I and my friends treat you to an early dinner? Oh, bananas, I'm hungry, Valet muttered, staggering out of the back room only a few minutes after going in. Please say that's right now, and I didn't just get up for nothing. Indeed it is, young warrior. Wallace extended a massive wing, reaching nearly across the foyer. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Are you jesting? Jordan's beak was practically to the floor. My good griffin, this is the invitation of a lifetime. Whatever creature would dare turn this down, I ought to wallop into submission. Wallace Whitewing, we would be honored to be your guests. Ha! Someone is infatuated by my reputation. Wallace winked, drawing back into the hallway. But listen well. The more one knows, the more one can glean from those around them. Do not be seduced by the prelude of greater, lesser, and equal. Shinespark and Slipstream started for the door as well, the latter bowing and the former nodding curtly. Other friends? Slipstream asked as she passed. Who else will be there? And can I ask where we're going? Wallace returned a confidence-inspiring grin. Of course you may, citizen. There's a tavern we like to favor it called Wet Floor. The entertainment is good, the food is well worthy, and it lacks reputation as a hive of scum and villainy. As for my friends, they are the fellow members of my exploration team, Marina and Diego. I'm sure we'll all get along heroically. 
Here's hoping, Maple replied, following the game smile and Starlight at her side. End of chapter 417